Welcome back to my all new segment, Let's Talk Church Talk with Janario Scott. Of course, I'm your host, Janario Scott. And again, this segment is just made to bring, I guess, light to some of the ideas and some of the questions that we have related to church, such as ties, what not to wear. So today, I'm sitting with Pastor Easy, pastor of the Carpenter House, Baltimore, and he's going to answer some of those questions for us. So stay tuned. This is Let's Talk, Church Talk with Janario Scott. Twenty-five years. That's that's a long time. Yeah, Janario, twenty-five years of uh, of ministry has been a long time. Not twenty-five years to the Carpenter's House, but twenty-five years being a traveling evangelist and a full-time employee. Uh, but we are now. I've just finished two years of uh, the Carpenter's House. Right. And you just retired, right? Yeah, just Congratulations. retired. Congratulations. Twenty-eight years working with the state of Maryland. Yes. <sighs> yes. That's battling <laughs> church, you know, being the head of a church, and then also being the head in your uh, job that you was doing. So let's, you know, I, I want to talk about the beginning. So how was it for you when it when you got that calling? Because some pastors say, you know, I was walking and I heard a voice say, you know, go to the church, or I was in church and it was prophesied to me. How did you know that pastoring or, you know, this would be your calling? Well, um, uh, as many individuals know, uh, maybe not, but some know that uh, I've been in church all of my life. Uh, my grandfather uh, is considered one of the apostolic fathers within our city. Uh, and he's uh, 96 years old, and I'm happy to say that he's still preaching. Uh, however, uh, I did not enter the ministry as some for family <laughs> business. <laughs> uh, it was not the family business, uh, but yet it was a calling on my life. Right. As I, um, uh, first of all, got saved. <laughs> I was in church, and uh, being in church, you know you can be mischievous in church and really uh, think that you have a relationship with God, but really uh, not really fully come to that place. Uh, but the burden of the ministry to see people grow and to see people develop and have a relationship with God uh, just did not leave me. It just would not um, would not let me go. And uh, I can't say that necessarily I was walking in the hurt from <laughs> or anything, but it was really the burden, right. the burden to share this gospel with everyone. Uh, that I possibly could, and um, and 25 years later, I'm still doing it. Still doing it. <laughs> still doing it. So within that 25 years, your mission. When did the mission for, uh, you know, reaching the lost and um, you know, mending the the wounded and healing the hurt? When did that come about? And how did you come up with that mission? Well, 25 years of uh, ministry in 28 years working in the Department of Public Safety and Correctional Services, uh, I was able to see on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes, I was praying for uh, people's children as I got finished preaching and the mothers were saying that my son's locked up, my daughter's incarcerated. And then on the other side, I was seeing people who were incarcerated mm -hmm. uh, that were um, children of the church, mm -hmm. children of the pastor, uh, children of the missionary, and um, and I saw this disproportion that we were preaching at them, but mm -hmm. we we're really not being effective at making them whole and giving them the tools that they needed. And so God um, commissioned me uh, with this ministry as I saw things down through the years. Right. I saw that as people came out of prison or
came out of their situation, there was really no place for them. Mm -hmm. They came to the church, and oftentimes the church, unfortunately, did not receive them. Um, and and so we begin to start the Carpenter's House, and our mission is saving the lost and healing the wounded. Uh, saving the lost, that is the unsaved proportion, but the wounded sometimes are those individuals who are saved, or for some reason or another, uh, decided to uh, stop going to church. And so, really, our mission is not just to go after the lost, uh -huh. it's actually to go after those individuals who stop going to church for some reason or another. Right. Yeah, I think that's really important because, uh, you know, when, when you're, when you're, I say on the, I would say on the outside of the church, and you see, uh, or you hear uh, the, the saints say, um, you know, do this or do that. But when you're on the outside, it's like, all right, so I have to be perfect, especially for the youth. Well, I think it's very important to be transparent. I think transparency is the key. Yeah. And, and equipping them for this war that they're in. Uh, the transparency from a place of understanding that we're all working. I, I try to be as transparent as I can. Uh, to say that God's still working on me as well. It does not excuse me. I, I am accountable. Uh, it does not give me the license to go out and do whatever I want to do. Uh, but uh, it's very important to understand that we're all in a battle. And the more equipped we are for that battle, mm -hmm. the better we can respond to the tricks that Satan brings. And so in this ministry, we try to, to, we love the praise breaks. We love we love praising God, but uh, more so we love equipping them with the Word. So when they leave church, mm -hmm. they'll have some substance to be able to handle uh, the challenges that life often brings. And to piggyback, you know, it the, the praise breaks again is. You know, y'all know y'all y'all like those praise breaks, <laughs> but the way that you you know you're you're teaching it and you're making sure that you know is 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 grasped. Why do you think it's important to teach versus you know the the praise break? Because well, the Bible says we perish for a lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It is the lack of understanding of how the enemy works that causes us to fall in traps. People don't go out and look to fall in traps. Right. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't leave the house and say, hey, I'm going to just fall in this trap. No. Uh, the Bible says, brethren, if any man be overtaken in the fall, mm -hmm. who would your spiritual restore such a one? Uh, people don't not necessarily go out to just fall. Right. Uh, but I do believe that if we equip them and give them substance when you, when you know better, it helps you to be able to respond to situations a little bit better. Uh, the praise break, listen, uh, we all know that we love to move. It, right. it has nothing to do always with the power of God, right. not necessarily. And now there comes a time when the power of God does move and, and, and I oftentimes say, if you see me moving, you know God is in right. the house. Um, but, um, but sometimes we are more emotional mm -hmm. than we are uh, in terms of choosing and making proper choices. Uh, if you, yeah, we have a young man that plays the drums here, and I tell you, when he plays, he makes you want to move. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, praise breaks. We 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 know doesn't doesn't really equip us. The word equips us. Uh, he sent his word, and his word did heal us. So on the word, I, I, we have to discuss the beginning of the word, and I guess I would say the, the beginning of the church. Okay. Well, um, the beginning of the church mm -hmm. in itself, um, if we're talking about the beginning of the church, of course, um, that church, the church, Jesus says, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. His church is his way of salvation. Jesus came to teach us the way. Mm -hmm. uh, there was religion, 
prior to Jesus coming in. But there was not salvation. Salvation and religion is two different things. Religion is what you do for God. Salvation is what God did for you. And so it's very, very important that we understand that the church was not birthed until Jesus did something for us. Uh, he hung on Calvary. He gave his life. Right. Uh, he went to hell. He spent three days in hell. Yep. Got up with all power in his hand. And, um, and uh, he told those disciples after walking with them as we're approaching Pentecost Sunday, um, he told those disciples to go to the upper room and wait for the Holy Ghost. Uh, he says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. I think one of the problems today is so many people are trying to be a witness with no power. And so the church is God's saving station on earth. Um, this disposition of the gospel was given to the man. Mm -hmm. It was given to the man to preach. And how can he preach except God send him? And so, uh, uh, yes, the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost um, after Jesus had done what he came what he to came, do. Right, right. <laughs> so how would you, how would you, I say, break it down to someone that's wanted to get, or, yeah, I would say wanted to get into the church or confused about Christianity and, I would, I would say Christianity. Well, first of all, the Bible says the fool says in his heart there is no God. There is no God, right. And so, first of all, coming to an understanding that I need God, that's the first understanding. But then, who is that God? Right. Uh, you know, uh, they talk about this God, they talk about that God, they talk about this God. And oftentimes, I would say that what well, the Word of God says, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I oftentimes ask them with their God, where is the blood sacrifice? And has that sacrifice been untainted, unblemished? And so if they can't tell me that their sacrifice is untainted or mm -hmm. unblemished, then it gives me the avenue to preach unto them about a man called Jesus. Right. Jobs uh, might. <laughs> Jobs might. Jobs might. It gives me that opportunity to preach unto them. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Philip comes upon the eunuch, and the Bible says, and he preached unto him Jesus. I think when we go back to preaching Jesus, mm -hmm. we're going to see the transformation that we need to see in the earth, and we're going to see that change in people's lives. Jesus is the way to mm -hmm. salvation. He's the only way. He's the truth and the life. And I think we, we and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the church did somehow got away from preaching Jesus and got, I guess, kind of caught up in blessings and, and uh, you know, healing. But, I mean, how, how, how do, you, do you think that we got away from? Absolutely. From Absolutely. I began a little while ago a campaign called Let's Make the Gospel Great Again. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump talked about Let's Make America <laughs> right. Great Again. And I really do believe our problem is not making America great again, it's making the gospel mm -hmm. great again. What is the gospel? Is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto mm -hmm. salvation. So we understand that it is the gospel that brings about life. I use a method called CPR. Uh, that if, in fact, you have an individual who is not breathing, non-responsive, what do we do? We mm -hmm. use CPR. Right. Well, my spiritual method to CPR is to preach Christ. That's what we're going to preach. Mm -hmm. How are we going to preach Christ? We're going to preach Christ with power. And then well, what are we preaching Christ for? We're preaching him for reconciliation. So we preach Christ, we preach Christ See? with power, and we preach him for reconciliation. Because we are ministers uh -huh. of reconciliation. All right, CPR. We're taking that. <laughs> CPR. All right, so when, when it comes to, I guess, the power of God and, and knowing what he's speaking, how, if, if someone were to know, when do I know, how do I know God is speaking to me? Or how do I know that he's leading me? 
Would you say it also it, that has something to do with faith? Absolutely. Faith is the core. It is the core of uh, who we are. There has to be a relationship with God. But also, God never contradicts his word. Right, never. So, uh, it is really getting to know the word. The more I know his word, the more I'll know his voice. Mm -hmm. And so, it's very important for the believer to know the word of God. Because in the beginning was the word, the word was, was with God, and what? The word is God. God. Right. And so, he never contradicts his word. It is the word that brings about a, a sound mind and a, and a sound spirit. Um, there are individuals who are driven by their emotion, mm -hmm. and your emotion will never take you to where you need to be. It is the word of God that takes you and gets you where you need to be. Right. Great, great said, greatly said. <laughs> so I want to shift it. So some of the questions, mm -hmm. one of the questions um, that we had was, when, when we hear, you know, when you ask someone, hey, let's go to church, and then, no, you know, um, you know, the Bible says, come as you are. Mm -hmm. So, I know that, you know, it's not talking about your clothes. Right. It's talking about the inner man. But we always, you know, someone always, I guess, use that as an excuse. Oh, you know, just come as you are. Well, I can't, you know, I can't wait this, or, just, you know, just come. Touch on come as you are. You well, know? well, one of the problems is the Bible never says come as you are. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not a scripture. But right. the the meaning or the understanding about come as you are, it is, it is, it is God's desire for you not to run. The Bible says that we have not a high priest who can't be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, who at all points were tempted as we, but yet without sin. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain help in the time of our need. In other words, God is not really concerned what this outer, our outer garments are. Uh, he's concerned about the heart. The first ministry that God does, Renario, is he he touches the heart. Mm -hmm. If you're only dressing up on the outside, then you'll have church clothes, and then you'll have club clothes, right. then you have worldly clothes, right. then you have school clothes, and uh, it becomes really crazy. <laughs> you know, it really becomes crazy. And uh, there's nowhere, as I share with our church, there's nowhere that you go into the mall, or you go into the Macy's, or you mm -hmm. go into the Nordstrom's, and they say, oh, this is where the church clothes right. are. Um, no, uh, it's about the Holy Spirit uh, speaking to you what is appropriate and what is not appropriate. And you have to be taught that. You have, you have to be taught that. That's not anything that, um, that happens overnight. But as far as the church is concerned, people ought to be able to feel free to come to hear the Word of God um, the way they are. But I promise you this, if they come to the Carpenter's house, and they allow the word to work on them, they won't stay as they Right. Are. <laughs> it's going to change you. It's going to change you. And uh, I remember uh, um, one of your sermons you spoke about, was it came from Genesis 1, 26 to 27, and it reads, Then God said, let us, make, let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, over the livestock, and all of the wild animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground. So, God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Mm -hmm. So, you touch on that. Well, it's very important that God never does anything without a purpose. Right. Uh, everything God does, he has a purpose in mind. God is a purpose-driven God. It's very important that you understand that when God made you, he didn't get surprised when you messed up. Mm -hmm. When he made you, he said, let us make man in our image. Let us is the, the plan of God. He knew what it was going to take to bring you to the place that he wanted you. So it took God in creation. It took Son and Redemption, and it took the Holy Ghost in the church. His job is to make us. He is not surprised when we mess up. He is not 
uh, ready to abort us or throw us aside when we mess up. Mm -hmm. Because the Son of Redemption was also included in the plan when he made us. Because therefore he knew that as God, we were going to fall short. Right. So therefore, there was a lamb that was slain before the foundation. So before he ever made you, the lamb in the mind of God was already slain. So therefore, you couldn't surprise him by messing up. Mm -hmm. Because God has a plan for our lives. And oftentimes, we don't love him until we find out how much he invested in us. Right. And so it's very important that God, when he made us, he made us with a mindset to subdue and to have dominion. And so sometimes it's hard getting there. But when we get there, we won't allow these silly obstacles to, right. to block us from be, being what God right. wants us to be in the earth. God has a plan. And he bought all, he fully invested everything, everything. about him into us. So you're telling me, all right, I'm just you know, get into this Christianity thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just learning, you know, God and the ins and outs of, you know, the word. So let's say Sunday, I go to church, everything is good. Monday morning, I, I caught myself slipping. So I now, you know, I ask God for forgiveness. So now it's trying, it's, you know, does he forgive me right then and there? And I have to now forgive myself, but how do I do that? Well, I want you to know that God really forgave us before we even messed up. The Bible says that um, if we would confess our faults, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. But he also said, my little children, I write that you do not sin. But if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is the propitiation of our sins, but not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. It's important that we understand that we... Uh, we don't go out after we're saved and we practice sin. Right. We're not individuals who practice sin. Uh, it's not uh, the mindset that we do. Sometimes we will uh, not meet the mark and not measure up to the mark. Sometimes we won't leave a place when the Holy Spirit says leave a place right. and we find ourselves caught up. But um, I want you to know that God is fully invested in bringing us uh, to the place that he would so desire. Which brings me to another point. Mm -hmm. um, we're living in a dispensation of grace. Mm -hmm. And because we're living in that grace, what we do with this dispensation is very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Right. And so a lot of times, the problem that people have is they don't listen to the voice of God. God is saying, come out, come out, stop, come out, don't do that, mm -hmm. come on, come on. I have better stored for you because um, every man is drawn away with his own lust. Once lust is finished, it bringeth forth sin. Once sin is finished, or once lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Mm -hmm. But once sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. What is that death? It's a sever between my relationship between me and God. I can't hear what God is saying to me. Uh, Isaiah 59 says, uh, the Lord's ears are not heavy that he cannot hear, neither his hands short that he cannot say, but your sin mm -hmm. have separated you, you between you and your God. And so it's important to understand that sin draws us away from God. Uh, it, it, so therefore, when I can't, when, when, when I'm drawn away from God, I can't really hear what God wants me to say. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So if the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, guess what? Um, if I can't hear what right. he's saying, then I won't be where he wants me to be. You're far out. I'm far out. And so uh, what we try to do is get you connected to hearing again. Get you connected on the right road so you can receive all God wants for you. All right. Y'all got that? All right. So just, just to add on, just to add on. So no sin. So is, is no sin big, bigger than no sin, or they're all equal? They're all equal. Uh, of course, we, we talk about abominations and things that God right. hates, and yes, uh, those particular things. But sin is sin. Uh, there are some sins that uh, uh, we'll pay for on this side. There are some sins that we'll pay for on the other side. Right. Uh, but sin uh, is very important 
that we stay away from sin. Um, one of the sins uh, that we often omit in the church while we talk about these big sins. I don't know where we get these right. big sins these from. Little sins. But one of the things that God said he hated, he hated he that soweth discord among the brethren. Mm -hmm. He said, that's an abomination. Six things I do hate, but the seventh is an abomination. And one of the things that we don't deal with uh, uh, at the magnitude and strength that we should be dealing with, we don't deal with discord among the brethren. Mm -hmm. Uh, because after oftentimes I say that unity releases the supernatural. And when we don't have unity, uh, it hinders the hand of God from moving at the level that he should move. So God hates it when anything comes into the environment to restrict the hand of God moving and discord does that. The hand of God is at the carpet house. Listen, <laughs> listen. So... Is it's, it's also a, another main question when we have newcomers, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we always tell them, you know, get you a prayer life. Mm -hmm. But for well, someone that doesn't know how to pray, you know, how would you tell them about praying? Because some people say, you know, you know, all right, praying is having a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. But then others say, you know, you, you thank God and then you, you know, ask him and you pray for this and then you thank him again. But is there a certain, I guess, process of, pr of praying? Well, for the newcomer, it's very, very important. Uh, sometimes we make church very, very complicated. Uh, and when we make it complicated, uh, usually complication doesn't make sense. Right. You know, <laughs> you know we, you're like, wait a minute, it's too much. Uh, it's too too much. much. <laughs> um, but prayer is really just having sincere conversation with God. Mm -hmm. God already knows what we have need of before hey. we ask Him. And so I, I, I don't have to have certain language to come to God. I don't have to come with certain postures coming to God. The key is we should be in a prayerful mode all the time. Uh, I don't have to necessarily be on my knees to pray to God. I could be driving my car and have a prayerful spirit. I could be sitting at my, my computer and praying. It's a mindset that I choose to necessarily <laughs> communicate with God. It's not even a, a time frame. It's not even a time frame. Um, while I'm going, I could just be riding the subway or I could be on the bus right. and just have a personal conversation with God as mm -hmm. long as that conversation is sincere right. and transparent. Because oftentimes we try to talk to God <laughs> as though God didn't know right. what we did or where we are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, you know, so so the, the key is just come and clean with God. Don't don't try to mask it. Say, listen, I need help. Right. And sometimes that's the greatest prayer is to admit that you need help. Help! You know, that's and sometimes that's the that's the greatest prayer. Just yeah. saying, hey, I need help. So I want to say thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for, I, I would say conversation, because this was a conversation. What advice would you give anyone that's trying to find Christ? What advice would I, first of all, the Bible says that you didn't choose me, but I chose you. My advice would be, it's the day that you hear his voice, harden out your heart. Um, the hard things that you think is hard mm -hmm. is really easy. Sometimes we're trying to clean up before we can come to God. Right. You, right. you, you can't clean up before you come to God. Uh, I don't care wherever you are, however you are, however you're living. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tell God you need help. And what will happen is he'll begin to work on you where you are. I oftentimes share this with the church. God is not looking for the perfect. He's looking for the committed. Mm. Are you committed to this thing? Are you committed to allowing God to work on you it's and bring you to the place where you need to? It doesn't happen overnight. It, it just doesn't. Uh, but I guarantee you, if you allow the word to work on you, 
uh, he'll begin to remove and shift things and change things and mm -hmm. change your appetite and change your desire. So remember, you didn't choose God. The whole point is God is choosing you. <laughs> Me. And so while God is talking to you, stop shutting him out and just say, you know what? I've tried to do this on my own. I can't do it. I can't do it. I need help. And start with saying, God, I need help. Mm -hmm. And he'll direct you to the ministry that he wants you to be in. Because the Bible does say, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can that preacher preach except God send him? And so this dispensation of the gospel has been given unto the man, has been given to the church. And that's our responsibility is to bring you and let you know what the desires, what God desires for you uh, to be according to the word of God. Mm -hmm. And where, where do you see your ministry? The direction or what direction do you want to take it? Well, uh, where do I see our ministry? Um, I see our ministry continuing uh, to grow. Uh, it is not necessarily a number that we're looking for. Uh, the Bible says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send in labors into his vineyard. Uh, our job is just to be committed to those individuals that God sends to the carpenter's house. I oftentimes say that the carpenter's house is not the only one going to heaven, uh, but we are one of them. Right. And so if you come to the carpenter's house, we're not going to tell you that we're the only church that's <laughs> going to heaven. I know there's some individuals out there saying that, but we're not the only ones. But we are committed to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay. the death, the burial and the resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ, that we would be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And uh, we've already seen major uh, transformation in people's lives already mm -hmm. by the word of God. Uh, my approach uh, has been a little different. You know, sometimes I sit at the table in the chair and, and I open up the word and I expound. And the reason why I do that it's because the Bible says and Jesus sat down and taught them. Uh, and so I am uh, a strong advocate of teaching right. uh, because I believe if I can get you to understand what the will of God is, that's the thing that's going to bring the transformation in your life. So I believe that we'll just continue to grow and I just pray that the grace of God would continue to favor us as he has been favoring us for the last two years. Right. So let everyone know how they can connect with you, visit, even, uh, you know, see you live. Well, uh, we stream all of our services live at live.carpentershousebaltimore.org. Live.carpentershousebaltimore.org. And then several of our services, we archive our services on YouTube, we have our own channel mm -hmm. there on YouTube at The Carpenter's House Baltimore on YouTube. The Carpenter's House Baltimore on YouTube. And of course, amen, you can always come to The Carpenter's House because we always say there's always room for you right. at The Carpenter's right. House. And we're at 3846 Crestland Road here in Baltimore, Maryland, 21218. And uh, we would love for you to come by and connect with us. We have two services, 8.45 a.m. and 11.15 mm -hmm. on Sundays. Awesome. And uh, our Bible class is uh, 6.45 on Wednesday nights. Uh, 6.45, I'm usually up by 7 uh, p.m. And so we encourage people to come straight home, straight to church, right. rather, from work and uh and be here with us for Bible class because Bible class is very important to us. Very important. Well, I'm going to say thank you. Thank you again. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's talk church talk. Janario Scott, Pastor Easley, thank you for watching. God bless you.